Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jan, I'm the advisor for the Exec uh, 737 development team. It's been quiet for a while, we've been uh, busily plucking away at our airplane and uh, have done some more systems uh, comple uh, completion. We've uh, finished the electrical system. You see there's some 3D already done here in the cockpit, the shell, uh, the side walls, but there's still lots of texturing that needs to be done. And of course, we are still working on that. Today, I want to talk about the electrical system. I set myself a limit of uh, maybe eight, nine minutes. So let's get going. We're on the runway here, both engines running. The generators are supplying the electrical system. If you want to get an electrical diagram of, of the 737, you can follow along a little better maybe with what I'm doing. But uh, first I want to show you that we are modeling the power draw. You can see the two amp meters that show the amp load on each of the two generators. If I, for example, turn on a landing light, you will see that the amp draw goes up a little bit. And also you can see that the generator drive temperature goes up and down. It's a little more prominent if I turn on a big user, like turn off the galley power, then the load lessens and the temperature actually increase, or the generator temperature, the oil temperature in the electrical generators changes. Now, um, we did not model every single little light because usually they only have uh, some milliwatts or even less power than that, but uh, the big users are all modeled, the ones that you would actually see in effect, like the window heat and of course the elect pumps, uh, all the outside lights that actually draw a measurable amount of power. Now uh, let's see what happens when uh, something goes wrong. We're not really modeling failures, but uh, we're modeling all the switches. So. Um, Instead of the generator bus failing, you could uh, just also turn it off. Of course, I could use this switch, but let's uh, see what happens when I turn off one engine. I use the start lever, move it to cutout. You can see it spins down. And what happens is I get some warnings. You can hear the sound lesson. That's actually the recirculation fans that are not running anymore. So it gets a little more quiet in the airplane. And you can see some warning lights coming on up here. Of course, the most... Uh, the source of all the trouble is the bus off. The generator bus is not powered anymore and I can toggle the switch all I want. It's not coming back on because the engine's not running. Some fuel pumps are not working. Of course, the corresponding electrical hydraulic pump is not working and some of the pitot heat, window heats are not working. But that's pretty much it. There's um, a transfer bus, which is usually powered by generator two. It's taken over automatically. Uh, by the generator bus one in this situation and this is the actual switch that controls this automatic feature and if I disable this you can uh, see that the transfer bus offline comes on some more fuel pumps uh, go offline also half of the pitot static is now really off so uh, you're in a little more of trouble now you would want to avoid the icing features you have some trouble because um, <coughs> One engine is only on suction feeding, as we call it. Uh, could be flame out or thrust deterioration above certain altitudes. But uh, and of course the co-pilot is pretty much blind. But uh, he was the one that turned off the engine wrongly in the first place. So that just suits him right. Now um, let's see what happens if I turn off the second engine as well. That would uh, remove all AC generation. Turn it off. And it gets dark. The background lighting is, of course, dependent on that. Some lights are still on. Uh, for example, here the, the FMSs, we did not hook those up correctly yet. They would also be um, off right now. Uh, the CDUs would still be working, but the FMS underneath would not be powered anymore. And the same with um, the fuel gauges here. But, as you can see, quite a lot of lights on up here. They're also powered by the hot battery bus. So whenever, as long as there's still power in the battery, uh, you will see these lights come on. And that's good because they warn you that something is not working. Now, how do I get power back here on the ground? Of course, I could yell for a ground power unit to get attached. I could call for uh, start the APU. But I want to show you something else. I just move this back. Bus transfer to auto. It has no function anymore because, of course, the... No power is being generated. 
But you can see this light up here, it's a standby power off light. There's a feature built in called standby power that enables us to run the airplane in a very basic mode on battery power. It's uh, disabled on the ground though, you can see the switches in the auto position because um, involuntary activation would drain the battery on the ground. But we want this feature on. So what I'm doing is I grab the switch, put it on BAT, which is the very left position. You can see the off light extinguish and uh, some things happen. Um, I have power back on the primary flight instruments. Um, they're not lit right now, but you can see there are no warning flags on the airspeed, vertical speed. And in a second, you'll see the displays come back on. They come back in a basic mode without uh, the blue and brown color, which is the way to save uh, heat generation in the symbol generator because those fans are not running anymore. But at least it gives you a attitude and position right now. Also, if you look up, you can see that the left IRS is being powered again. The on DC light is off. The right IRS is still on DC. It will stay there for five minutes and then it will auto shut down to save some power. If you were in flight now, you'd have about 30 minutes of flight time left on batteries. So it would be time to find an airfield to put her down. And of course, that includes one APU start attempt. Um, those draw a lot of power. Of course, you could uh, attempt to start it on or to start it more than once, but uh, if that fails, that would leave you with a lot less power actually. But um, we're on the ground, so we don't have to worry about that, and uh, we want to start the APU. And um, I'll show you a neat effect now as we start it. It will draw a lot of power. I will uh, go to the battery up here on the electrical. Uh, Monitor, you can see it has a pretty big draw right now with uh, 30 amps and um, that depletes the battery. That's all the systems running right now. And if I start the APU, you will actually see that uh, this power draw gets a lot bigger and you can also see that uh, the lights dim because um, the voltage goes down during this high APU start power draw. So I'm going to start it now. Watch the DC amps closely, watch the lights. Door opens, takes about 10 seconds, and then the starter kicks in right now. Lights go dim, and really the amps are off the scale. Um, they only go to about 100, but it draws over 300 amps. And you can see the EGT come up, come back down, and eventually the generator APU Gen Off Bus light will come on, which means the APU is available now, and the lights are back to normal. And of course the battery is still discharging, but I will connect it to generate a bus, the APU to generate a bus, and you can see it's the battery charge immediately starts recharging the battery to always maintain a full battery in case you need it. On the ground you can use the APU to power both generator buses. That's only available on the ground, not in the air. So I'm doing that now. And you can hear air conditioning coming back online and um, of course some lights are still on for example the auto fail light on the pressurization system if uh, AC power fails for more than don't quote me on that a uh, couple seconds 20 seconds or so then it will revert to standby mode and just to go back I will go to standby and back to auto and here we go again and the uh, same thing for the IRSs. We did not exceed the five minutes, so both IRSs are still aligned. If they weren't, uh, then we could at least get them back in attitude mode during flight. But uh, on the ground, of course, you can run a full alignment while the plane is not moving. Well, this concludes this little uh, sneak pee, uh, preview into the electrical system. Of course, it's a lot more complicated than that. And fortunately, during regular flights, you don't have to mess with it. And uh, next flight, Next video, I will probably show you a basic circuit in this airplane where without too many complications, without too many FMS fiddling. This airplane is a joy to fly. You can just uh, point it up and it goes, and I will show you that in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one, and see you next time.